So this is how I water in my worm juice. This is a, a boom off a ATV for doing like broad acre spraying. On the back of the buggy, I'll have a little 12 volt pump. Uh, it's a little shore flow 12 volt pump. I think it's something like 12 liters per minute, um, which is good. The boom is 1.8 meters. I think it's got four nozzles on it and what I do I have the plants the seedlings spaced apart so every nozzle sprays the plant um, and then in between the plants and so on and so forth for all the plants around um, and what that does is make sure I get a good soak of all the plants and sprays in between gets all the worm juice Worm juice doesn't pretty much has no nitrogen in it. Um, it's just basically a bacterial inoculum. Um, trace elements and things like that are in there as well, but it's not a fertilizer, that's for sure. Um, I use it like a sea sole kind of transplant inoculum and I always spray it in the holes that's what I was doing before in the time lapse I was spraying it in the holes before I plant it in there that way the hole itself is actually moist um, you know there's for a plant there's nothing worse than its roots coming in con like being nice and confined and moist and then being exposed to the air and then worst of all being put in dry soil where its roots dry out straight away um, yeah, you get a lot of shock happening that way. If you keep them nice and moist. Um, I like to do all my transplanting in the late afternoon. Um, and that way you avoid any heat shock. They get to stabilize overnight. Um, they're not being planted, you know, in the direct heat of the sun. The ground temperature cools off a little bit, so it allows for the moisture to hang around a little bit more. Um, the last thing you want to do is be spraying your nutrients or your inoculums onto baking hot soil, so it just evaporates away, you know, really, really quickly. You want it to stay moist for as long as possible, so the the probiotics in the inoculum have time to make their way down. Well, you know the best that they can make their way down um, to the soil strata below and you know try and improve a lot of the minerals and stuff just get washed in you know through watering cycles and when it when it rains and stuff like that um, but these beds you know as I've said before in previous videos they're, they're very bioactive um, I have done in the past put mycorrhizae inoculums in the ground ectomorphic and endomorphic um, inoculums but unless you're going to make sure that the inoculum has contact with a living root um, it's very inefficient just to spray or broad acre spread um, inoculums like this over the surface of the ground you know 99.9% .9 of it doesn't take doesn't ever come into contact with a living root um, those those types of fungus fungi need to be in contact with a living root um, 
I think off memory with the inoculums, it's something like within three days of becoming active from its powdered, you know, form to its moist inoculum when it's being spread out. It needs to be in contact with a living root within three days um, or it doesn't survive. So that process itself is very inefficient. So when I do my inoculums, I like to, oh sorry, when I do my mycorrhizae, I like to do it either at the seed, inoculate the seed. If it's a seed that takes, you know, 12 days to bloody germinate or 20 days to germinate, I wouldn't even bother inoculating the seed. When you transplant, you inoculate the root zone of the plant with the mycelium um, inoculum and then plant it in the location you've chosen to. And doing it that way, you know, you've guaranteed 100% contact with the living root of the plant that you're trying to inoculate so you know you get a better um oh, i don't know what the term is to be honest is it a germination fungi they're not animals so it's not yeah it would be germinating i guess um yeah i've had a mental blank i can't think of the specific term for fungi um when they're spores well, yeah, that would be germination, I guess. Um, yes, so when that occurs at the living root, it is successful. When you just do broad acre spray, or even if you, you know, casting above the root zone of a plant, it's not likely that that inoculum is going to make its way down to the root zone. Um, yeah, or if it does, you know, because the, the soil can be that p tightly packed, and even in soils that aren't tightly packed, um, you know, the mycelium inoculum itself is quite large comparatively to the water droplets and the soil particles around it. Um, and the soil itself can act as a filter and hold the mycelium up in the top surface layer where it's not contacting the, the root zone anyway, so it's just... I find it a redundant practice and it's expensive and there's not much benefit but um, yeah ensuring that instant contact with the root zone is um, the best way to go about using your inoculum in my opinion anyway so I mixed up about five liters, uh, no, 20 liters, sorry, 20 liters of worm juice from the worm farm with the 200 liter drum of water. Um, and that's what we're spraying at the moment. I don't know if I'll spray out the whole 200 liters um, or if I'll leave some for another day out of this drum. I've got some more seeds seedlings that aren't quite as strong as the ones that I've just planted out um, that won't get planted out for another few days maybe even a week so I like I won't hold on to this worm juice that long but um, if they need if they get planted out in the next couple of days I'll probably uh, use this batch if I haven't already sprayed it in the other vegetable garden or in some of the ornamental plants and I don't have a shortage of worm juice I have a um, a thousand litre worm farm well an IBC made out of a worm farm it wouldn't hold a thousand litres of liquid um, total mass of you know biomaterial as well as the worm juice probably wouldn't even get up to 800 kilo uh, 800 yeah 800 kilos 800 liters um, just because the way they're designed there's a reservoir in the bottom of a, a cavity down the bottom where the worm juice forms and then up above a diffuser that's built in there 
there's uh, all the organic material and the worms living up there. I don't have it harvest the worm castings so much as it's just um, for the worm juice. And there's 120 acres here and eventually I want to build this spring another worm farm and get a little collection tank and put off the side so I can pump out the worm juice over the year. And there's a section of the property I want to prepare, improve the ground for pasture to run the chooks over. Uh, when I expand the chickens up to about 3,000 birds and at that point you know I want to have a nice pasture about five acres um, three five acre paddocks would be nice uh, just so I can pasture feed the birds reduce the costs and I, I prefer to have them out in uh, situation free ranging rather than in sheds or pens like no one wants to be locked up all day if anyone's ever spent time in confinement well i suppose we've all experienced confinement so with covid19 that's why you know no one likes being confined i like to farm the animals free range in the biggest enclosures that i can that's how i do my worm juice thank you like and subscribe have a nice day